Carl Corey with Jeff Shiwi and Kevin Raber. Take one. Welcome, everybody. It's uh, Kevin Raber, and uh, this is Photo PXL, and we're going to be trying something new and different today. Hopefully, if it works out, it's going to be something we do quite often. And essentially, because we're all inclined to be in our houses and not go anywhere right now. We can't go out and do photography outside. We can't go out and shoot together and uh, do videos of that sort of thing together. So we're gonna try something new and different. And we're gonna be talking to uh, numerous photographers and especially some industry leaders in regards to what's going on today, how things are gonna change and what they're doing in their life. And of course, what they're doing in their profession. And first off, I wanna say, I hope you're all safe. I hope you're all healthy. Please stay that way. Uh, it's a trying time for everybody. It's probably the one time uh, that I know of probably in the history that everybody is fighting the same thing around the world. And um, maybe when we come out of this, we're all gonna come out of it better people and have a better world to come out into. Okay, without much politicizing and so forth, I wanna first off introduce Jeff Shiwi. Everybody knows Jeff. and. Uh, we also have Carl Corey, who is a friend of Jeff's. Uh, they've had some adventures together. And what we're going to be talking about is uh, some of the things that Jeff and uh, Carl have done together. And Carl has made this great little book. Uh, it's called The Strand. Uh, I just picked it up recently. We'll have links in the article that accompanies this video. It's some amazing photography uh, that really shows a style in regards to uh, capturing for lack of better words, the American landscape. And I'm not talking woods and mountain river landscape. I'm talking the American landscape, the defining part of America uh, that we all see day by day along the roadside and so forth. So Jeff, take it away, my friend. Thanks, Kevin. You spoke too much. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing new. <laughs> yeah. uh, so thanks, Kevin. It's uh, actually a lot of fun to be able to hook up with you and, and Carl. Uh, both of you, I've had some wonderful photo adventures with, and I've known Carl, he, I think he's probably kind of my oldest friend, uh, although I do have friends that are older than him. I think we've known each other for almost coming up on 40 years, Carl. Uh, and one of the things that I wanted to do is uh, tell a little bit about Carl and then have him talk about the work that he's done and also some uh, kind of prestigious stuff that he's um, gotten involved with. And, uh, uh, but what I wanted to do is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to try this because this is all kind of uh, unknown territory, but I'm going to start sharing my screen and show you some pictures and then have Carl uh, defend himself. No, <laughs> talk about himself. So this was one, this was my introduction to Carl Corey. Uh, we both had ads in Art Director's Index to Photographers, I think around 81 or 82. And I saw this and it was I was immediately jealous. And it really pissed me off that somebody else came up with a shot that I thought was really neat. Uh, so I decided I want to meet this guy. And for one reason or another, we got together and I went over to his studio and visited him and discovered that he really was a very good photographer. Um, this was another shot of his that I really liked. This also was like, damn it, Carl did it. Um, so, uh, you know, a nice um, aesthetic. And Carl's background really was not so much studio photography, but kind of fine art journalism, kind of street photography from Southern Illinois University. Carl, you went to SIU, is that correct? Yeah, I did. And it was more of a, I wasn't a journalism major. I was uh, more into the documentary photography realm. Just a little, a little, there were definitely two departments there and one was photojournalism and the other was the fine art. Well, there were three and then there was the commercial. I never had a commercial class there. Yeah, um, yeah no, I was, I well, was David Como was like my mentor who's, you know, quite a, quite a, uh, he does the cultural topography stuff that I am still doing. I'm carrying on. Cultural topography. Is that yeah. what you said? Yeah, it's kind of a way to, to say like what I do in a nice easy way without getting verbose like a lot of people like to do. I, I don't like to get verbose about it. So it truly is the American landscape, but it, it's it's not 
it's about the American culture. So yeah. it's just a lot of cultural topography. Yeah. And oh, geez. There you are. Carl, I didn't yeah. know you gave me this. All oh, right. Al, that's you, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, a long time ago with, uh, with uh, color in my hair. Mm -hmm. And hair. <laughs> And, and, and about this was that Jeff had a reputation of being this tough guy bully, and I knew he wasn't. So I wanted to do a photo of him with, with the teddy bear in his pajamas, and so that's how that kind of. Oh happened. man, that's classic. Technically, those are not my pajamas; they're props. Well, yeah, they're not my. It pajamas. was my teddy bear. <laughs> so then you kind of graduated out of that, and one of the first things that I remember seeing of yours, Carl, that was kind of non-commercial. Um, um, I mean, you know, the history was that you spent uh, about a decade or so uh, in commercial work and then kind of um, moved on from commercial work and tried to go more towards um, cultural topography. And so one of the things that you did was you went out to South, uh, South Dakota uh, at, you know, a, uh, a, uh, a Pollock from Chicago going out, hanging out with a bunch of ranchers out in South Dakota. And I remember this shot and it was the cover of the uh, ranchers book, which I can also show you, uh, which was really uh, kind of a launch to your book work and publishing work as opposed to uh, the commercial work. So tell me a little bit about the story about how you hooked up with these guys. Well, I, the, about the last stuff I did was uh, Marlboro. I was, I was doing a lot of work um, with the Marlboro uh, creative team at Leo Burnett. And one of the fellows I met was a scout uh, for, for Marlboro that lived in uh, Western South Dakota. And he's also a cowboy poet, a very good one. His name's Robert Dennis. And um, I befriended him and talked to him about an idea that I had about wanting to document this, the true West, which is really kind of only left now in the Western Dakotas and Eastern Wyoming, you know, where the ranchers are. And I, I was interested in their lifestyle and how unique it was. So he actually became a, a liaison for that. And uh, we became uh, and are uh, good friends to this day. I really used that project to cut my teeth to try and leave the uh, commercial vision behind and, and become, uh, you know, try and find my own voice I, rather than work into uh, the voice of art directors and creative directors and the ad agencies. So um, that's what I used that for. It was kind of a workout, kind of a project I wanted to do that way. And as a result, I think the book is a mixed success for me. I think there's some nice photographs in there that, I, and then there's some photographs where I just couldn't leave the technique and the, you know, the graphics behind and get, become a little more raw with the work, a little more honest with it. Um, that, by the way, is, um, that's another photo I did of the, the boy uh, when he was, he was nine when I did Rancher. This is him years later uh, with his son, Gus, and his wife, Hope. Uh, and I did that portrait in Rapid City. And um, so, yeah, I did, I've done three photographs of uh, Chance. I love these shots and, and uh, just window light at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, a big window and um, in a big room and a huge, a wall of windows. And the art center, I, the art center said I could use the room because I said, boy, I'd like to do portraits in here. And then they were real helpful. You know, they, they, you know, allowed me to use the room for two days to do this series of portraits. Well, that's cool. That actually is Robert Dennis, uh, the guy that, you know, is, was instrumental to me being able to do the rancher book. Oh, he was the scout. Yeah. Well, yeah, he was, he, he worked with Marlboro a lot and um, scouted for them. And then he had a place out there and then we befriended and then he introduced me to his friends. Basically what it was is he just took me around and introduced me to his friends, but out there, you know, like a small ranch is 7,000 acres. So a friend, you know, a friend of his could be 50, 60 miles away. So we spent a lot of time in the car. One of the other things that you did um, was a series on American workers in particular um, uh, people that are, working um kind of the blue collar jobs in fact didn't you call it blue yeah yeah i called it blue a portrait of the american worker. i went into workplaces that would allow me to and uh photographed um the the people that made you know that made the place go you know that 
that were the backbone of the industry. And um, what was amazing is I contacted over 300 corporations and about 15 actually allowed me to come in. And I always wondered like what, why that was, you know, what well, they're, they're hiding scared, something, but <laughs> they're, scared of, they're scared of guys with cameras. And, oh, but yeah. I also told every, every person I told every corporation I contacted, I said, you'll have a right of approval. I won't show a photograph without you saying it's okay because I didn't want to reveal any proprietary secrets in manufacturing or any OSHA, you know, issues or whatever. I wanted to make sure that there was no, I assured them there'd be no harm to them, but yet still it was very difficult. It was a real learning process for me doing, uh, doing blue and, and how corporate America actually treats their employees or thinks of their employees. Hey Carl, what, what gave you the inspiration to, uh, uh, to, to pick a project like that? We, what was the seed that kind of got you going there? Well, I, I try to do things that I think need to be done. Um, you know, I, I I want to do things that I think can, can help or can, you know, elucidate something and, um, uh, you know, uh, be a catalyst for thought and the people that see the work. And so that's, I just felt the American worker needed to be documented. I really did. I just thought that, um, people need to understand just how important they are, uh, to, uh, the entire um, culture and society that we have in the United States. In the world. I mean, workers are important all over the world. But, you know, I, I focus, of course, on just the United States. And, and that you ended up turning into a book, correct? I did not. Blue is not a book. There's It's a collection of time cards uh, that I made. It's like a, there's a two set collection of time cards. Like I do these little special portfolios and editions. And um, that's all I did with those was I actually created. Time, I got an old time card and I scanned it and then stamped them and scanned them all different and wrote on them. And then what I what I did was I put the actual name of the employee uh, on the time card. So it kind of would keep them embedded in the whole work ethic, the whole idea of work. What a clever uh, idea. So now are these <laughs> available for sale or is this part of an exhibit? Yeah, these are, these are all, you know, hand printed and kind of handmade. And they're, so it's an addition of five. So, uh, there are two box sets, um, uh, available. Um, the other thing that, uh, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the fact that, uh, being a Wisconsinite, you currently live in uh, uh, River Falls, Wisconsin. Um, you actually were enamored with, and back when I used to drink with you, uh, I don't drink anymore, but back when I used to drink with you, um, there were a number of Wisconsin taverns that Carl and I frequented. And I, I think he noticed that some of them were very interesting. So you did a whole series called the Tavern Lane. So talk about that briefly. Wisconsin's unique in, in this. <laughs> but, uh, the thing about taverns in Wisconsin is that they're actually a social meeting ground uh, for people in towns. So they, they don't, and uh, people here don't, we don't necessarily entertain in our homes as much as like, well, I'll meet you down at the spot bar at the Chippewa club. And, um, you know, or in this case, Bob Smith's and have dinner and then, you know, have, have a couple beers. It's, it, it's where people would go to congregate and uh, discuss events and discuss, you know, ball game, whatever, just to socialize. Um, and the reason for that is that, you know, a lot of these, a lot of people would live 20, 30 miles away from each other and the tavern would be right in the middle and mm -hmm. be a very convenient place to meet. So yeah. A lot of these taverns also are supper clubs and you have food so you can go there for dinner. And, you know, in Wisconsin, um, you, a, kid, a kid of any age can be in a tavern. And I think they changed the law, but if you were 12 or older, you could drink beer or wine with your parents' permission if they were in the, in the tavern with you. It used to be, that used to be the law here. This is, I mean, is it a taxidermy shop or oh, just a bar? Oh no, that's Bernie and Kathy Turek. Um, they retired from Chicago and moved up there and decided they'd buy a bar and realized that they're busier now, they work harder now than they ever did when they had, you know, when they were employed in Chicago. Um, but that, that bar, the moccasin bar had, um, all this taxidermy in it. it has the world's largest muskie has that albino deer it has one of my favorite things right behind, over Kathy's shoulder is the badger and the gopher in a ring and the managers are skunks i thought it was kind of <laughs> so all these little dioramas have these little statements to them and so i was talking to, to bernie and he goes he says oh man he says i bought this place and he says i saw all this taxidermy he says and it, it's, I'm just addicted. He says, I now have two pole barns filled with taxidermy, all of it, this kind of kitsch stuff. And he goes, 
Is today I have the largest single collection of taxidermy in the world. So, uh, you know, other than like a museum, largest individual that has the largest collection of taxidermy in the world. So you early on started doing a lot of things, the, the, the habitat, basically just photographing kind of odd things that struck your fancy. Yeah. I mean, you didn't go out with ideas specifically to shoot oh. things. You just went out and looked to see what struck you. Correct. There was no real theme other than the fact that they're all kind of, uh, you know, uh, topographic pictures. Or they're all pictures of places and things, you know. I just love the balance, the way you've done these. Uh, you know, it's like inspiring me to think about going out. Uh, it's it's kind of like photography for a lot of parts you can do right now because you don't have to meet up with people anywhere. And, right, right. Um, just go out and shoot. Yeah. And, my, and you, were certainly, you certainly had um, proper social distancing going on there also. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, one of the things, Carl, that this kind of Americana, this kind of picturing of kind of um, interesting or sometimes bizarre uh, aspects of American life uh, or scenes uh, led you to create a blog called Americaville. It's not an every single day post, but sometimes you do post like multiple days in a row. So, uh, for example, you've got this shot posted on April 7th uh, from Amory. Carl, talk a little bit about the development of this blog and what it has led to. It may not seem that way, but I'm not the biggest fan of social media. Uh, <laughs> I do. I do like. The, I do like the fact that in, uh, Facebook has allowed me to reconnect with a lot of my old friends. I mean, friends from high school, and I've literally reconnected now socially and in person with some of these people, and uh, that that is great. That that was just great. But in terms of a gallery or like um, you know uh, a way to present work as a serious artist, it's really not. It's not the it's not the platform, and there's so many people that believe that like you know social media is the platform. I I, I definitely take issue with that. It's a nice way to to put work up and share work, but really it's it's of no consequence. Um, I did Americaville before I even knew there was a thing called Instagram, and so what I did was I posted work on uh, on just a little blog, kind of as a way to keep me active. It was more. Uh, a personal thing, a way, a, a way for me to say, uh, you know, I want to do photos uh, and I want to, I want to keep active. I want to make sure that I work a lot. I'm really prolific. So I wanted to have a reason to be prolific. And even if I was the only one, and I probably am the only one that sees Americaville, um, I did that for that reason. And then um, someone said, oh, you should post on Instagram. So I posted some crap on Instagram and, uh, um, you know, uh, now I post on Instagram a couple times a week too. What, what is funny when you say that you're prolific, I, I, you know, knowing you for as long as I have, you just wear me out, literally wear me out with all the work that you do. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was when Carl uh, recently, he sold his house, the, well, he sold the ranch and moved to River Falls to get a neat little um, location. Uh, and I love this location. Uh, now this is the house, to the, the, the studio itself is over to the far right. Uh, I'm actually but, standing on the patio of the studio right there. It's right, right to my right, yeah. And then No Way, the cat that allowed you to live with him. Mm -hmm. that you can, that's a studio on the right now. And, you know, and so that looks down to the creek and all that. And, um, and then that's the house over, you know, kind of in the center. And I think this is the boss of the place. Is that Cheddar? That's Cheddar. Yeah, yeah. he runs the joint. Yeah. So you got animals running your place. That's pretty cool. Kind yeah. of yeah. the way we live in our house here. <laughs> yeah, I so, wouldn't have it any other way. No, I don't uh, either. So what ended up happening, Carl, you actually ended up creating a project uh, called The Strand, you actually um, submitted and ended up being selected as one of 13 photographers for the uh, John Simon Guggenheim uh, Foundation. And it allowed you to basically 
help fund your or subsidize your creation of the strand. So talk about that a little bit. Every project I do is a is a slight evolution from the project that I'm working on. The, it, the progression is very small. It may seem that, you know, by the time you look at what I'm doing now and what I was doing 20 years ago, there's a difference, but it was a very gradual move um, from project to project. Most of my projects come out of other projects. For Love and Money came out of Tavern League and, um, you know, Tavern League came out of Habitat. And, and so you're right, Jeff, the strand came out of the work I was doing um, just Americaville, this kind of cultural topography work. And uh, um, it's, you know, it's, it's just what I decided was important uh, to me being a great Laker from Chicago and uh, such, and still living in, you know, really the Great Lakes region, even though I'm, you know, 150 miles south of Superior, it's still the region. Um, the great Lakes are, you know, uh, an important, uh, an important part of American history and, and the center of the Rust Belt. So I wanted to go see what the, uh, the strand that, you know, the beach along the Great Lakes was like those communities. And so that's what this project is. I did, uh, I don't know how many photographs, 3000 and the book, there will be a book on this. We'll have, uh, this, this little booklet you have there is actually the, the portfolio that the Guggenheim foundation has now it's 30 photographs that they have, uh, but there's a hundred and, I think about 126 are going to be in the book. It's kind of where I'm at now out of the thousands that I shot. And, um, well, you know, one of the of shots that you did was with in Iron River, Wisconsin. One of the reasons that I think that's interesting is that uh, I was actually with you. Here's a shot of Carl. Now, this was not the actual photograph that was in the strand. He shot that from way over to the right, but this is the scene that we were shooting together. Uh, and you'll notice in the in the foreground, he's got this little thing called the Mini Winnie. Can you see the Mini Winnie, uh, Kevin? Yeah, it's a cool looking car. Well, I got to tell you, Carl and I lived in that for a couple of days when we went up to Lake or Superior, Wisconsin, and it is Mini. I I just I could barely sleep in it. And uh, everything's Mini for you, Jeff. Huh? Everything's mini for you. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I could <laughs> barely take a shower. Uh, and just to show you how small it is, I wanted to, to show the inside of this. This is a panel. Hey, Carl, uh, just had a quick uh, question for you. Are you a, a Fuji guy with this stuff? What, what equipment are you using with these? Uh, yeah, for the, for the Strand and... Uh, Americaville, I, I am a Fuji guy. For all the other work, it was uh, Hasselblad with the phase back. And then now I actually built the camera that I'm using that is based on a Mamiya press camera from 1967. Oh, very cool. So I'm using it in Mamiya lenses. Yeah, I had a, I, I machined the back that'll hold a, a, I have a nice leaf portrait type back on the back. So it's for this portrait project I'm starting. So uh, I really like the camera, but it weighs eight, eight friggin' pounds. Oh, well. so, uh, <laughs> Well, I call it the Luddite yeah. flex because it's a Luddite contraption and it makes you flex your muscles. Those were all shot with that camera, but using a. But at this point, I was shooting a Fuji uh, Type 100, and then bleaching the negatives and scanning them to make prints. And um, so that's what that's what this is. But I really like the quality of these lenses and this camera. Um, so. Um, and so, I my client so that I could take, put a digital back on it. And I can also put the, it's nice. I can put the Polaroid back on if I want, and I can put a digital back on it. So, yeah. So I love this shot. Uh, it, I, do I sense a little political message there, Carl? Yeah. I try not to have any message in my photographs, believe it or not, but this one I, I thought um, he had to be made. So I yeah. made it. You drifted over. <laughs> That's my mom in no way. And no way, yeah. And I got a, a big kick out of the fact uh, no way does like his picture taken, but he, he, he's he got one look, doesn't he? Yeah, handsome. He's got yeah. one look, the handsome look. He is uh, he is the most social cat I've ever known. That's a friend of mine's son, um, and uh, he's, he's a great kid, Jack. Beautiful, beautiful portrait. Nice one, Don. Great lighting. In fact, oh, it's, it's just great. Same lighting I'm sitting in. I'm sitting in front of that background right now. That's yeah. so. That's how this light looks if you use a camera. You know, the <laughs> camera. that's our good friend Jim and Bragno in Chicago. He's a good athlete. He's a good goalie. 
you have a hard time getting the puck by this guy. But, but yeah, he's a great guy. And this is a punk rock drummer, believe it or not. Uh, and um, I wanted to do his portrait, and that's kind of sometimes how he dresses. And he's he's a real bang the skins hard type of guy. So, yeah, great guy, hey, Eric. Carl, on your look here, you have a, a very unique look or, um, you know, kind of a, a color grade and so forth. Uh, did you spend a lot of time trying to pick the color grading and how you wanted to do the look on these? It's well, I made very, very unique and goes well. It's an Oriental rug, an old, cheap Oriental rug. And then I flipped it over on the backside and I stained it and brushed it by hand so I'd have some of that Oriental rug pattern come through. And the, the palette actually is the, it's that Fuji palette, you know, it's that okay. film palette. And so I really wanted that kind of, uh, I guess, you know, um, non-digital look, you know, you know what I mean? I, I, and I wanted to shoot yeah. it on film. I want, I, I'm kind of a purist that way. I wanted to, I, I know that you could emulate this pretty well in Photoshop and stuff, but just for me, I wanted it, I wanted to be forced to work that way. I wanted to. So this, it. this looks like another shot where you decided you needed to make okay, a, okay, cool. there's a little something. <laughs> Um, so, Carl, one of the other things that I was going to mention is Carl is very prolific. One of the other things that Carl does along with a partner is a uh, the Visual Conservancy, which is yeah. a Facebook group that I've joined and, and have posted some, uh, some of my more interesting photographs as much as possible. But it's basically a Facebook group. It's a public group, but you have to be approved. And the deal is... Yeah you get to post one image per week um, and not, you know, uh, not a lot of other rules, but that you actually, <laughs> somewhere in there, there's a, a thing that you have to pass a test in order to get there. But I love the visual conservancy. So talk about that a little bit, Carl. Well, my friend Dan Gerber and I, um, you know, we get together, uh, probably every six weeks and, you know, um, and just have a couple beers and talk about photography. And uh, we decided that we needed this kind of a group um, where people could share work. And so we created this website or this Facebook page of Visual Conservancy. And for two years, it stagnated. I mean, just, it was just, you know, we had 30, 40, 50 members, whatever, and blah, blah, blah. And, and one night we're sitting here and I said, you know, why don't we curate it? but let it be self curated and people can only put one picture up um, a week. And Dan uh, thought it was a good idea. And then uh, we did it that way. And now we have uh, over 800 members in, in a year. And uh, you know, it's not, it's not an easy group. It's not an easy group to join. I mean, anybody can join, but you have to answer questions. You have to answer the questions. You have to acknowledge the fact that you're only going to post one thing and you're not going to, you're not going to um, uh, uh, talk politics. There's no political. There's no shares. There's no business. There's no sales. It's looked at as a gallery, and it's it's allowing photographers to put one photo up a week in this gallery. And so that's what we use it for. And uh, and we do a publication every year called Peer, which is uh, we we take the most popular posts of the year and we reproduce them in this this magazine peer and then people can buy the magazine. We're working on peer number two right now. You know, actually visiting the visual conservancy in, in these times is one of the few places you can go on Facebook and not have to unfriend anybody because of their political views. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things I enjoy with my morning breakfast and, and coffee. And uh, once or twice a week, I kind of scan through there and I uh, just admire some of the work and, and talent that's, that's out there that are part of this group. It's very nice. Yeah, and um, we're, we're real proud of all the photographers that are part of it. And uh, they've all been real supportive. It's, it's been a great group of people and there's, it really has. There's Jeff. Look at Jeff. Big boy. <laughs> yeah. and, I actually uh, answered all the questions and got in on, uh, I'm just going to start perfect. posting pictures more often. <laughs> if Jesus don't answer the questions, he can't join. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, proud of the fact that uh, uh, I got a picture in the, in the book, but it, I, I got to tell you, it is a challenge. I posted something uh, uh, last night. It really is a challenge to, to edit down and just uh, also I'm kind of like curating my own work because within the um, ordering that I post, 
you know, I try not to put a lot of black and whites together and a lot of colors together. So this is a collection of the images that I posted to the Visual Conservancy. And Carl, I actually want to thank you for that because it's a project that I look forward to every week. I try to post like Monday or Tuesday, um, but it, 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 it is a challenge. It's like, what am I going to post this week? And so it's, it's a little bit of work to actually go ahead and do it, but I really enjoy it. Cool. Well, thank you. That, that was kind of what Dan and I wanted people to do was to think about their pictures and, you know, to make it a little more serious than just like a place to slap up some images. It, we wanted them to really think about what they're doing as photographers and, and they have that little venue for them to uh, show us what they're thinking. Anything else in particular, Carl, that you wanted to get off your chest? No, no, I, uh, I have nothing that I really need to get off my chest. I just encourage people to keep working. And, uh, you know, keep your head down and work. And that's really the way you get there. So, so anyway, uh, Jeff, thanks very much for uh, being part of this and uh, sharing your images. And Carl, uh, look forward to looking at your, uh, your site here. I'd, I'd love to get some more of your, your work and maybe even purchase a print. There's one, in, one or two in there that I saw that uh, really are pretty special. And I really do hope the three of us get a chance to photograph together once uh, this isolation period is over. As uh, far as my readers go, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, it's fun to have Jeff back on the team and be able to share uh, a passion, which we all have. Um, I enjoy spending my time with Jeff. We've traveled to a lot of places. We have a lot of laughs. Uh, I get picked on a lot by him, but uh, it's all in good jest and fun. You know, I wouldn't pick on you if you weren't so pickable. <laughs> it's... It's just my spirit, my good spirit, and it's just a lot of damn fun. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's, I've been blessed to count you as my friend and uh, Becky and your family, and uh, they shared some of all these adventures together. I think with what we've seen right now with the COVID uh, virus uh, thing going on, that it makes us cherish all the people in our lives a lot more and uh, make a commitment uh, once this is over to get back to – uh, visiting our friends and, and getting an opportunity to bump elbows and um, have some good times together again. Uh, we'll be trying to bring you more of these uh, little vignettes and interviews uh, as we move forward and we learn how to use Zoom and some of this new technology better and we hope you're all enjoying it. And I appreciate it very much, all of you that support the Photo PXL efforts and you know, we're here because we're trying to inspire you and enhance your image and it just means an awful lot to a lot of us. I do this because it's my passion and uh, just a lot of fun. Keeps, keeps me young. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Carl. And thank you, Jeff. Pixel. PXL. Pixel. PXL. Why do you have such difficulty with that? Anyway, everybody, take care. See you. And uh, appreciate you all being here.